Well, I guess I'll try to play one game of Hearthstone. Or I retell the Pavel story that I told like two years ago when I played, we have to go way back to 2016 Hearthstone World Championship. Yeah, okay, this is it. <laughs> okay, so here's why I like Hearthstone. I started on YouTube making Hearthstone, as uh, some people here may know, and I started in 2015. And I was never good at playing the game, but I just like following it a lot. I think it's a very, very, very entertaining game to watch, and I just watch a shitload. This is also when I like started to really get into Twitch and stuff, because it was so entertaining. So then in 2015, I started to, I was like, I should try making videos. Whoa, you can like make videos about stuff. So then I learned how to edit videos just off a random internet tutorial thing, learn video editing, and then that year just started making Hearthstone stuff. So then in 2015, I quit my job at EA and tried to make it as a Hearthstone YouTuber. Did not work, but I got a job at ESL, which is an esports company that ran a bunch of Hearthstone things um, among many, many other things. So anyways, 2015, I learned to edit videos and quit my job to try to make it as a YouTuber, but instead ended up in a job in esports. And so in all of 2016, I worked on the Hearthstone World Championship, which is like Blizzard's big giant tournament, big giant like tournament series that they did for Hearthstone the whole year. And I didn't know anything about esports. But then over the course of the year, they basically just like made me the lead, one of the leads of the production. This is the ending of that whole year. This is the Hearthstone World Championship. So this is at BlizzCon. You don't need to describe it. We've read your LinkedIn. There's Frodan looking dapper. Ooh, just realized this match is Ukraine versus Russia. Anyways, so um, this is the this is the end of like a year of competition. This is at BlizzCon. So there's like, you know, 10,000 people in the crowd or whatever. And so th this is like the last show that year that, that I produced. So I was like organizing the caster, like the casters, the players, uh, various things, like the production team. I was like the project manager, basically. So managing many, many different elements of the thing and most things going through through me in terms of how it's organized. For example, like who's casting what matches and who goes where and all, a lot of the creative stuff. So anyways, this is the this is the final tournament of the whole thing. This is like the end of an entire year of build up to this moment where you had, I don't know, thousands of people compete for then the regional championships and then that goes to the world championships at BlizzCon and then this is the finals up on stage and the stage is actually sick as fuck. So they have this really long match, right? It's Dr. Hippie and Pavel, two very, very good players. This long match goes, it's like an hour and 10 minutes, right? Hearthstone was hype. Oh, it's best of seven, that's why. last turn before Pavel, he will do it. The bite, the sinister strike, the attack. Pavel is your 2016 Hearthstone World Okay, so Pavel wins the world championship. Um, now, me as like the producer, one thing I'm responsible for in this case is making sure everybody knows what's going on in a way that the show can actually run well, right? So, Dr. Hippie and Pavel do not speak much English. They are pretty young. Uh, Dr. Hippie was, oh, I think he was in college. He might have been like 18 or 19 at the time. He was really didn't like speaking English or being in the center of attention. Uh, Pavel's kind of the same thing. He was like a little more down to be out in the open, but. Um, you know, these are, these are like kids. It's very understandable that they wouldn't want to like be in front of a thousand. Oh, and there's like 300,000 people watching online, by the way, this is like a big fucking tournament. If you count the China numbers, which are always kind of faked, then it's a million, like a million people potentially watching. This is so a big moment. And understandably somebody who's just played Hearthstone in their room up until this, and then just randomly is on stage in front of like a million people. Understandable. You'd be really nervous. So before both of these guys went on stage at the beginning here, like right before they walk out. So they, they, they come from off stage, literally right before he walks on stage. I'm on, I'm right behind it. And I talked to both of them and I said, hey, so if you win, we want to make sure it's like a fun moment with you getting the trophy. So when you get the trophy, be sure to hold it up in the air so that, you know, the camera can see it and people can celebrate. And so both of them were just kind of like, yeah, okay, okay. And they just sort of nodded and were like, yeah. And that's, I, from what I remember, that's all I said. But I told both of them that, like, hey, if you win, I know you're thinking about the match, but if you win, just remember to do that. Which is important because there have been some really awkward moments in esports of people, like, accept, accepting trophies. Like, it's been, for anybody who's, like, a diehard esports fan, there are some super, super awkward, like, trophy ceremonies where people, like, hold things or drop them or are just, like, uncomfortable or just leave and don't, like, don't even stay. So it's trying to avoid a situation like that. So we get to the ending, right? And Pavel wins it, and he comes out on stage, and I'm like, okay, this is great, and it's gonna be a great moment. Everybody's like flooding in. I think that's me, right there. That's my shirt. So they talk for a little bit. Uh, thanks to everyone for this huge support. Uh, I'm really appreciate that. Yeah. Great guy, by the way. Both of these are super great guys. So really happy he wins. And then, and so then they go through this, and here comes. Mike Morheim, the president of Blizzard, to give him his trophy. 
You had hair. Shut the we fuck would up. Like to award you this trophy on behalf of Blizzard Entertainment, on behalf of the entire Hearthstone community. 2016 was There's a great year Hi, for Hearthstone Esports, and we're incredibly proud to crown you as the new world champion. From everybody at Blizzard, and from the millions of Hearthstone fans across the world, congratulations. I don't see me. Whatever. So he gets it, and he holds it up. And I'm, I'm sitting over there, I'm like, yes, he's doing it, dude. Yes, like, what a good shot. This is awesome, right? Look at that. And he, like, imagine the worst case scenario. He just holds it and, like, kind of walks away, or he drops or whatever, right? This is awesome. Look at this shot. Look how sick this is. And I'm like, fuck yeah, Pavel, this looks awesome. And he's still holding it. And it's still a good shot, right? <laughs> and he's still holding it. And now... I remember turning. I was next to Sottle, I think. I remember turning and saying like, Okay, he's good now! <laughs> yeah, so Sato was right there. So Frodan starts closing it out. It's clearly, there's me. It's clearly established that it's over. Frodan is, is taking this out. And he's still going. I think the camera panned away because he's like, he hasn't moved. <laughs> and it's still going. Raven is, Raven is, they're like, people are like looking around in the back, like, what do we do? He's still, like, he's holding it still. Look, you can see me, I'm moving in because I'm like, somebody needs to go tell him to turn it down. I think this is TJ to try to tell him to put it down. Okay, there he, and there he goes in, TJ saves it. But like, it was so long, man, it was so long. And people like joked about it, <laughs> that like, Pavel is still holding the trophy to this day. Look at my beautiful hair. Anyways, I always felt bad about that. Probably better than the alternative of him just leaving, which was a possibility. Genuinely, that was not bad at all. It was weird in person. <laughs> we, you gotta understand as well that this has all of these camera changes, right? During this whole section, right? You're seeing different, if you're watching at home, you're seeing these different things. But on stage, it was just him and everybody, the crowd, the people behind were like just sitting there awkwardly. Nothing changed for us. So imagine if it's this shot. And it just sits here for three straight minutes. It could have been worse, but I still felt bad because I'm sure in his brain, he was like, I don't want to do this, but that weird guy said I should hold it above my head. 